Hi guys, welcome to Brandex Reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about the recently released No Time To Die original soundtrack score on record. Now, I recently did a video talking about this record that was released around the same time, so if this kind of subject is of interest to you, you might want to check that video out as well. Um, now, this obviously is the soundtrack to the new film. If you've seen the film itself, you'll be familiar with what the score is. Um, this is a 2LP set, and I'm going to get into some of the specifics of it, talk a little bit about the music itself, so not necessarily specific to the record, but this video is going to be mostly about the actual record. So, let's have a quick look. Now, I've re-sleeved this, so this outer sleeve doesn't come with the thing. I've just done this myself, as I said in the last video. Um, something I do, you don't have to do that, but uh, it's... Always good to protect records, if you can, from dust and things like that, scratches. So, um, as I said in the last video, because this record is a 3LP set, so it's quite a thick one. Um, the sleeves that I use, usually I just use for just any normal records. Seemed adequate for this record, adequate for this as well. Obviously, that's a 3LP set and it fits that. So, a 2LP set like you've got here um, is going to work as well. So, if you've got sort of general... Uh, plastic sleeves the normal ones that you use should work if you want to do that and now obviously I've kept the hype sticker um, let me just take out the sleeve one moment thanks right apologies for the glare I'll try to keep it to a minimum if I put it on its back like that it tends to get a bit of glare on there so I mean obviously as you can tell I mean you can see from the way that they the light is shining off that you can it's a pretty good thing actually because you can see uh, it's got like a different kind of uh, different print on it obviously around bond as you've got to the background so um so yeah that seems to be helping to describe the thing um now it's a gatefold that opens up and the artwork on the inside very nice very nice like print on this as well you can't really make out from the video but the resolution is pretty good but that's the inside uh, as i say it's a two record set so let's look at the first one if i can get this out now, in fact, I'll just show you this first, actually. So this is just a basic bit of artwork, maybe something that you might want to put in a frame or something like that. Um, as I said in the last video when I was talking about the this Best of Bond, James Bond record, um, this one came out. You can get the a golden edition of it. I'm not too interested in coloured records. Um, I tend to just go for basic black ones um, unless they're the same price but the gold one i think was an amazon exclusive and it was an extra 10 pounds so i mean really i mean it was already you're already paying 25 pounds for this um i'm not a huge collector in terms of uh, limited editions or just gimmick editions as i think the, the colored ones are so i just went for the, the basic black one now the inner sleeve um it's not like the ones on the, the bond james bond compilation record where i was saying it's good when you get sort of plastic lined inside this is more of a sort of paper card kind of thing but it's a a decent quality one so you're not going to get any paper uh, flakes in there because that's usually the most annoying thing um i'll just take it out just so we can see the actual i might better do it single-handedly let's have a look yeah nicely done there so i'll just come around this way obviously you can see there that's the uh the label nothing too remarkable See if I can slide it in. In fact, no, I'll just stop recording one moment. So this is obviously the, the inner sleeve, and on the back you've got the gold, 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 gun barrel logo. Um, fairly generic, but uh, it's what you kind of come to expect with Bond, fairly standard kind of thing. Um, obviously that's the first record. The second one, similar sort of thing. Um, I'll just take the, uh, take the thing out. Let's have a look. So here we've got the gun barrel on one side, we've got the exact same thing that we had on the last one. I'll just put that over to one side. And then um, you also get, see if I can get the thing out, another, I don't know what you call this really, some, some people call them like production notes, um, that kind of thing. You've got some more artwork as well there. So you kind of see the kind of information there is on there, just kind of credits that kind of thing you get these in cds and everything as well so it's fairly standard so that's what you've got there in terms of the artwork and obviously there's the back of the thing as well so let's have a quick look now obviously it's on uh two records so that's four sides and you can see the tracks here like i say if you've seen the film 
uh, you'll have heard the actual music itself. I should have done it that way around side C and then side D. Uh, Hans Zimmer did the score. Now this does contain the the full version of No Time to Die. It's not an orchestral version. Um, it's the full version of the song, which is great because a lot of the time with these soundtracks, these Bond soundtracks, some of them historically haven't always featured the actual title song. Um, they might have gone as far as to have like an orchestral version of the thing, but uh, it's great when it does actually have the uh, the actual song itself. And it's good as well that to Hans Zimmer had some input with the title song by Billie Eilish. Obviously, this is a separate item. This is the actual single that came out last year in 7-inch. Um, but it was great that Hans Zimmer himself did the actual uh, the score and had some input in the song because that means that they can incorporate the, the tune of the song in the score. So it does appear in some places. And then the actual song itself appears right at the end. It's the, uh, it's the last track in terms of the, um, the the listed tracks. You've got some, not bonus tracks, but some cues, uh, music cues that are on there as well. There's four tracks right at the end after the, the, the final title song. So it's good that they've put all this on record because a lot of the time when you get records like this, um, you sometimes find that the digital downloads or the CDs actually have more music on them uh, simply because the record, there isn't enough space on the record or whatever, so you're paying more and actually getting less, technically speaking, in terms of uh, the music. Um, having said that, I haven't actually compared this to the actual CD. There might be more stuff on there that, that isn't on this record, but I don't think there is. I think they've, they've generally put everything on here. Um, no doubt there'll be some kind of full uh, recording sessions version of this released if it hasn't already been, but that'll be some kind of limited release. Um, kind of going off on one a little bit there, but um, yeah, other things I'd have to say about this, obviously, if you've seen the film, um, I'm going to give some slight spoilers away, some minor ones, uh, so if you don't want to get any more spoilers, maybe turn this off now, or skip for the next minute, let's just say, yeah, the next one minute. So, obviously, in the score, it does incorporate the music from On Her Majesty's Secret Service, some of the, well, the actual the main theme there, as well as an orchestral version of um, We Have All The Time In The World by Louis Armstrong. And that song actually does appear in the film. That song, the full song by Louis Armstrong, is in the film. That's not on this soundtrack, though, but this does contain the track that is the orchestral version. Um, so uh, that was a nice surprise, anyway, where it appeared in the in the actual movie. Um, but it, like I say, it does appear on here as well. So... Uh, they haven't listed it in the actual uh, track listings as um, as that. I think it was around this kind of area. I think it might have been the back to my six, possibly. I can't remember now. Or was it home? I can't remember. I seem to remember it was around this area where that appeared. Anyway, so um, I'll come off spoilers now because it's been a minute. Um, beyond that, um, Hans Zimmer obviously did the score. So originally when it was announced that Hans Zimmer was doing this, there was some thought, you know, is it going to be a generic Hans Zimmer score? Not in a bad way, because a generic Hans Zimmer score is still a very good score. But with it being Bond, it kind of needs to have Bond in there as well. Um, so there was that kind of concern. I think that they did very well, um, Hans Zimmer did very well, that is, uh, with this, in terms of having both his own signature on it as well as it being a James Bond score. It has some really good um, interpretations, Hans Zimmer interpretations of James Bond, so you've got a really nice amalgamation there with, with things. There were some moments in this score where it did sound like he was kind of reusing some of his same music cues that is used in other films, um, particularly the Dark Knight trilogy. It was like, I think one of the tracks, and it was, which one was it? It was I'll Be Right Back. If you look that up on YouTube, it's probably on there. You'll see what I mean. It sounded very much like something that you would hear in Batman Begins. It's very similar to some of the score in that, particularly the bit in Batman Begins where he's riding in the, the Batmobile or the Tumblr. It sounded very similar to that score, and that's not a bad thing because I mean Hans Zimmer does this. He's been doing it for decades, 
Um, it's just what you kind of expect. And it's great because you're listening to it and you're thinking, oh yeah, that's Hans Zimmer score. That's cool. I like the fact that he does that. I'd rather he did that than he didn't because otherwise it's just generic. So, uh, so there you go anyway. I'll, um, I don't have much else to say. I've only played this once and I've seen the film once. So that's my initial impression of the thing based on um, those two uh, interactions with this. So I'm sure I'll be listening to this many, many more times since. Is it my favourite of the Daniel Craig scores? No. Um, I prefer the uh, was it Thomas Newman ones that, that were done for uh, Skyfall and Spectre. Um, he's a guy that has worked a lot with Sam Mendes in the past who directed Skyfall and Spectre. And so he didn't return for this. Probably a good thing because it would have started... I mean, he was reusing a lot of his music cues uh, in Spectre that he'd used in Skyfall. So I imagine if he'd have done this, it'd have been more of the same... Um, but this does complement that very well. So if you like the the kind of music that you got in those films, um, I think that uh, this is a nice kind of lead on from that whilst giving you something different, i.e. a Hans Zimmer score. Um, obviously, the two films prior to that, it was Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. David Arnold did those. They were great. Um, David Arnold was really good when he did the Bond scores because he managed to do quite a few of them from Tomorrow Never Dies onwards up till Quantum of Solace. So over a decade's worth of work and they all seemed to be very unique um he, he didn't I mean, he repeated some music cues but um each what each film soundtrack brought something new to the table so uh, we'll see anyway if Hans Zimmer comes back uh, it'd be really interesting to see if he did I think he was a last not a last minute replacement as such but I think he was a late in the day replacement for the the person that was going to do the score originally because of a lot of changes when uh, Danny Boyle was directing and then wasn't directing and so on. So they brought Hans Zimmer on. Uh, maybe they had his number on speed dial and he was free that weekend. Um, and they knew what they were going to get. And uh, he delivered. So I'm really happy with this. Anyway, um, I'll leave it there. I could talk for ages about Bond music and stuff. Um, I do have a playlist, I think, on Brand X Reviews if you want to check that out where I've talked about Bond soundtracks, Bond music. Uh, particularly a lot of the records as well. I do actually own all of the Bond soundtracks that you well that you can get anyway. I was showing this in the last video um, on LP. I've got them in order here. The ones that you can get anyway. So the, pre pretty much the 90s ones onwards became a bit tricky, although the Daniel Craig ones did get later releases, apart from Quantum of Solace uh, yet, as far as I'm aware. If it's out, I'll be buying it, believe me. Um, the 90s ones, all I can get from the 90s is the Moby uh, single, Tomorrow Never Dies. Um, there might be some others. Um, I think there probably is a Cheryl Crow on somewhere, at least on 7-inch, maybe, but I don't have it if there is. And then before that, it's pretty much all, well, it is all of the soundtracks I've got on record um, before that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm a big collector, as you can see. That's the point, anyway. So, uh, so this will make a really nice collection, uh, addition to the collection, anyway. So uh, I will leave it there. Um, Brand X Reviews, um, I'm going to put a video in a second. It will appear on this, some details about our Halloween special that is coming up at the end of the month. But for now, thank you very much for watching. After much speculation, I can confirm it is coming this October. No, not him. The ninth annual Brand X Reviews Halloween special series will be dropping in late October. Myself and my co-reviewer, The Core, every year we do videos talking about horror movies, horror TV shows, TV specials, whatever, ties in with the scary season. So late October, we're not going to say what we're going to talk about yet, it's just going to drop. So check back, late October, Brandex Review. <laughs>
legend, the bowling legend. 